Welcome to Chinwag with the Horseman. I'm Andrew. I'm Avery. I'm James. And I'm Casey. We're uh, we're <laughs> we're glad you're joining us for Chinwag with the Horseman. Wherever you get your podcasts, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on Pandora, we're everywhere. And uh, for those of you listening, if you wanted to check us out on YouTube and see our faces, you can do that. We are um, a homely Not bunch. Infamous. No, we we do okay, but like got a face for radio, if you know what I'm saying. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> a face for radio. Uh, hey, Barry, if they were gonna find us on YouTube, how would they do that? Chimway with the horseman. And they they just search that, or do they shout it at their computer? <laughs> <laughs> computer, Chinwag with horsemen. <laughs> well, well, I mean, they could just shout at their computer if their computer has a microphone that registers speak, like phones. That's do. a good point. Or the Apple That's a good TV point. remotes. Siri does a bunch. Hey, somebody, if somebody has Apple TV, see if you can just shout Chinwag with the horseman into your. I want to see if that works. Somebody, let us know. We, um, we we definitely have to have with the horseman on there because if you just say chinwag, you're going to get some like, podcast randomly. thing with Paul Giamatti. And, you know, we're going to sue him. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, probably not. That yeah. One out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Edit out my legal threats, too. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to use, what is it, legal.com to, to kind of help us on that. Do you think they legal. help that? Legal Zoom. We're going to get on Legal Zoom and and see what we can do. Uh, James, assuming one of our wonderful listeners, perhaps one of the millions and millions that get uh, entertainment from our shenanigans, if they um, decided that they wanted to email us with the results of their attempt, uh, how would they email us? Uh, They could send it to uh, chinwagwithhorseman at gmail.com. That is correct. That's 100 points to James. Uh, Casey, if they wanted to tweet the results at us, it's how would X they do now. that? It's X. Oh, yeah, you're it's right. X. So do you no longer say tweet? Do you say if they wanted to exit? X I don't the, know. I ain't got a clue. I, ju- I just know that it's X now. Yeah, so we're on X, I, I suppose. X slash formerly known as Twitter. The artist formerly known as Twitter. I don't know if we are. I, I haven't been on in a while, so we we might not be. <laughs> well, we might not be, but Casey, where do they go to look? You go to the what used to be Twitter and Chinwag Horseman, I believe. That's right. At, That's it. At Chinwag Horseman, and and then you can uh, tweet us your deepest thoughts and desires, and you we will. Ex, you can X at us. You, gosh, yeah. I'm never going to be able to do that. <laughs> You can X your deepest thoughts and desires to us, and we'll see what we can do. So um, tonight we've got kind of a couple of stories that we just want to tell, Um, and (laughs) they revolve around former jobs and current current battles with with epic animals and and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what order we want to do this in, but. I mean, since it's more recent, it's more in current events kind of stuff. James, do you want to tell us about your epic battle? Oh, yeah. I can I can tell you about it. So um, this afternoon, um, I was coming home, and uh, we we lived down a dirt road, Cotton Squeller. The, the manor is off a dirt road. <laughs> so I'm coming down the dirt road, and uh, I'm talking to uh, Abray on the phone, and out of the corner of my eye, I just see this big, like, long item laying, like, in the road. And I was like, hmm, I bet that's a snake. So as I got closer, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a diamondback. So I slid the truck over and run the snake over. And then I was like, you know, being a good individual, you have to double tap. So... I'm just sitting there talking to Avery, just carrying on a normal conversation, just, you know, doing a doing a donut in the truck to turn around and go run the snake over again. Um, run it over again, do another donut to turn around. Uh, and as I, like, do the second donut to turn around, the snake, like, raises its head up like it's going to, you know, strike at the truck. And I ran it over a third time. And then uh, I told Avery, I was like, 
I'll call you right back. So I get off the phone with him. I call my wife and I was like, Hey, um, you might want to get your dad, um, and come out here to the road. Cause I've got a, uh, a rattlesnake, um, that I've ran over and, uh, they came out and it was, a it was a fairly, uh, good size, um, rattlesnake, um, probably, you know, four and a half, five foot long rattlesnake, just hanging out, basking in the sun. And then here comes me in a, in a truck, just dum dum, and yep, turn around and run it over a couple of more times. So, <laughs> yep. Took care of that thing, man. Yep. Took care of that thing. And then, um, I get, uh, I get back home and I get, um, terrible news. Um, that a hawk had gotten into uh, our chicken coop, and uh, our uh, brave little uh, rooster did did his best to fend off this hawk. But um, well, I think he won. Sadly, he it uh, it didn't happen. I mean, yeah. he, sac- he sacrificed yeah. himself for the for the flock. Like he did for the he, greater good. Yeah, he, he did his job. He was like, "Hey, you hawk, you're mine." Oh. But the hawk didn't get everybody, right? No, the, the hawk didn't get didn't get any of the others. So we um we had eighteen um uh chickens. Uh sixteen Jersey Giants, black and white um Jersey Giants, which are about two and a half foot tall when they're when they're fully grown. Uh and then we have a uh, a silky and the rooster was an americano and um yeah he uh he fought violent or uh Ballant. valiantly Man. yeah he probably fought violently too probably, probably. but um uh, yeah that was that was the news i got so well mm-hmm. r.i.p james's rooster yep. he died doing what he loved you know fighting hawks and fighting hawks and things I'm yep. Going down to fighting hawks and being awesome, fighting, fighting hawks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as you do, you know, no problems. Hey, he, he was like, what you got? He was like, you like rattlesnake. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rattlesnake. There's a, there's a local business close by that um, that pays for rattlesnakes, kind of like a bounty system. So I don't know if we'll take it down there to them. Um, my father-in-law, with the couple he's killed. Um, he's turned two into belts. Well, he's got one that currently, I think, turned into a belt. Um, and then he had one, um, stuffed, like taxidermied, um, to look like it was striking. And, uh, he used to put that in, um, the floorboards of, uh, the vehicles at work to, uh, to scare his, uh, his coworkers. Um, Man. I would quit. <laughs> I would straight up quit. Like what doing- happened to... Why happened yeah. to Johnny? Oh, uh, he died. <laughs> you know, was Frank, Frankie, Frankie put a uh, rattlesnake in his car. Yeah. It was dead, but you know, Frankie thought it would be hilarious to watch Bobby, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Well, what we didn't know is Bobby had we caught and just, he turned over what? and now it's a snake and he was like. <laughs> Avery, what are you doing with this backstory <laughs> of Frankie and Bobby? At one point, it was Johnny, so I don't know. <laughs> can, uh, Frankie can we and Johnny were sweethearts. Avery's, Avery's, Avery's getting lost in the in the love garden over there. So, <laughs> can we uh, can we offer some suggestions for for what you do with the rattlesnake? I'm totally down for suggestions on what to do with this rattlesnake. So, you guys can pitch them out there. The fans can pitch them out there, or I think they're the wags. That's what they uh, they voted. They wanted to be called. So I, I don't know. The I have some other fr- fans that they that they won't try to come up with their own name. Well, if we, they, if they want to come up with their own name, they can put it out there. But right now, wags seems to be winning the race. At least the I think name. I think Avery should be made a hat out of the rattlesnake. Maybe a mask. That would be cool. A Would mask be. like a like a COVID style? Uh, no, know. dude, like ski mask. <laughs> like he he can fight crime with it. Yeah. Not like oh, I'm going in the grocery store. Let me put on my rattlesnake. 
mask here? No, right like I'm going to the grocery store. Let me put on my rattlesnake mask. <laughs> I'm and going it covers the, his whole face. I'm going into the bank here. Let me put my rattlesnake mask. <laughs> <laughs> You know, let, let me visit this children's hospital with a rattlesnake mask covering my entire face. You know I could, uh, we could make it like, um, like, oh man, Cobra Commander from uh, yes. GI Joe. Oh like, yeah, that kind of just like really elongated, you know, you know snake cool? mask. Whatever, however you make it, the there has to be the rattle at the very back of his <laughs> like a like a rat tail, like a rat tail, <laughs> and he shakes his head. <laughs> That's when you know you're getting a little too close. <laughs> oh. The so you like. Said. That's another thing. For this snake to be so big, the the rattle on it was not that large. Like, oh, I mean, it was – the rattle was only like that. I mean, just well, tiny. Well, size isn't everything, James. It's how you use it. I guess. So. <laughs> Don't judge that poor I rattlesnake mean, based on his – The poor rattle. rattle. Are you body shaming the rattlesnake? <laughs> he can still kill. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, Cialis might have helped. Um <laughs> He might, he might have had more rattles. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? He might not just been laying. On the, he might not been laying on the road. That's right. He'd have been busy. Who knows? Yeah, like a baby rattlesnake. Casey and I could tell some. All right, I started to say something that was going to sound really weird. I was going <laughs> to say Casey and I could tell some stories about Cialis. <laughs> <laughs> We but did. that's only because we sold it at CVS. Yeah. <laughs> it had nothing to do with using it. That was a popular um, medication. Yeah, it, it was. was. If, if you want to know the real story about Andrew and Casey and Cialis, that's on the OnlyFans page. <laughs> so it will cost you extra. It yeah. cost you a lot of money to hear that one. That's behind the paywall. <laughs> so I will tell you. I will tell you one thing that happened at work today. This is, um, you know, I work at I work in the school where we all went to high school, and they were looking at yearbooks and they found our senior yearbook with the extra they, <laughs> with the misspelled name on the, <laughs> on the high bottom. school yeah, it's extra, <laughs> I forgot time. about that <laughs> so they were like McKinney show us you know I don't know if my last name's ever been out there before but you know show oh, us yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's out there. All right, good. yeah yeah because show, you guys show use us mine. you you know you put your own out there with the Sasquatch stuff. No, that but, was, you guys used mine way before the Sasquatch stuff. Yeah, that's a long, long time that's, ago. That's probably been, true. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. But anyway, so they were like, um, you know, I was showing them people and coaches and stuff that, that uh, they would have known. And I said, oh, let me show you Aberry because Aberry also works at the school. Aberry's not in our senior yearbook. <laughs> Aberry's just not be. there. He should be in there. He should be uh, in the siblings page because they took mine and his pictures for siblings. Oh, well, maybe he's in there on that, but like just his class photo is not there. Is it just blank? He, he, well, it's just not there. He, you know, he graduated with my sister. So I was looking yeah. like fiercely in their class trying to find it. And everybody's just not there. I, I did not take Long. that. Yeah. That's I unfortunate. Not. He took a. Break year, what, what, what is it called? Where you take a some time year. off? And, yeah, t- he took a gap year in ninth grade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he took a he took a gap year and uh, you know toured Europe. I don't know. He went back to Vietnam. Vietnam. That's, yeah. actually, Vietnam. Casey, 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 that would be Casey. That would be that would be my uh, so, that that would be my sophomore year. Mm. Gap year. Yeah. Yeah, the year that I took off would have been my sophomore, not my freshman. Fresh uh, yeah. Come on, Casey. Hey, the other night I dreamed that I was fighting in Vietnam with Bill Cosby, and it was kind of weird. Does anybody have anything they want to suggest about possible meanings on that? Casey's uh, mom actually commented on my Facebook post about it with a pretty in-depth analysis. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw that. It's, it's pretty pretty impressive. It's pretty can, funny. Can, can you uh, elaborate? Elaborate? elaborate. <laughs> What's she <you> saying? <laughs> well, I could, eh, Barry, but it's a family show. <laughs> uh, do you want to? Do you want a fourth attempt at that word? <laughs> no. Hey, hey, Barry, why don't I elaborate a little bit on the dream? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. So uh, it was weird. Like we were in the jungle. I was aware that I was in Vietnam. 
<laughs> and um, like I look around and there's freaking Bill Cosby like in a sweater and everything. Like not even in gear, just Did in he have a sweater. An or anything? No, he was just standing there. <laughs> was he offering people drinks? No, he was not. <laughs> Although maybe that's that's how we could have won Vietnam, maybe. But you know, it was just weird. It was funny. And Casey's mom was right. like, "What'd she say? She said you're fighting a battle from the past, and you can take comfort in '80s sitcoms or something like that." It was like this oh, in-depth, yeah. like in-depth analysis. Explanation. It was, was hilarious. He your commanding officer. He was literally just there. Like I looked around, and there he was. <laughs> Were you a soldier? Yes, but it was so. It was like it was kind of like a Family Guy cutaway, <laughs> where <laughs> it's just ran, two random elements pushed together. You know? Yeah. And it, you know, it was just funny. I wish it had been Conway Twitty instead of <laughs> Bill Cosby. Have you been watching Conway. too much uh, Family Guy and cutaways? I've not watched Family Guy in decades. Or the Cosby Show. Or the Cosby Show, really. Probably not in 10 years. But do, I enjoy the you, Cosby Show. Do you yeah, have, that's weird. Did you have something to eat right before you went to bed? A, a pound and a half of cocaine, but I don't see what... <laughs> that's not no, unusual. No, really, really. Did you eat right before you went to bed? Maybe. I don't remember. It's possible. So, so they studies out that sometimes when you eat and go st- directly to bed, you have re- like your dreams are so random. Well, or you might just have nightmares. The bill. Or you might just have real bad nightmares. Are you okay? Oh, I, 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 I was trying and, not to burp. Oh, <laughs> oh, I appreciate <laughs> that. It was like you got choked up saying the word nightmares. You were like, <laughs> Ugh, nightmares. Cook some foods. <laughs> I mean, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I, I have random oh. dreams like that. No, it's just of Cody Rhodes? <laughs> no, of like random, <laughs> randomness stuff happening. With but, Danny and the Turtles? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's an off air joke. You won't get that, but it's hilarious. Trust uh. me when I tell you that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diabetes. Um, so that's actually a pretty good segue barry um so my first job was at a gas station in our local in our town there you know where we grew up and the guys we were kind of reminiscing before we started recording about some of the hilarious shenanigans and goings on that happened at the gas station i worked at and one of the guys that one of the regulars we've decided to call wilford we're not gonna you know, we're not going to, because this guy definitely had diabetes, <laughs> but, but we're not going to name their names. But Diabetes is not anyway. anything you laugh at, people. We, it is not. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to tell this. So we were off air talking about this stuff, and we were like, a lot of these people are probably dead. And Avery was like, well, Wilfred is definitely dead, you guys. You've got to be serious. Like, he was so serious about him being dead, like we really need to be respectful. And this guy was so gross, like you don't even know. <laughs> I cannot even describe to you how bad this human being smelled. And Avery said, "Yeah, they put him in a home and they washed him, and I think that's what killed him." <laughs> <laughs> After trying to be real serious about, he's passed away. Speak with respect. Like his, uh, his biofilm was the only thing that was keeping him alive. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Wow. So Wilfred, um, Wilfred was the <laughs> owner's cousin, and that's why he hung around a lot. And uh, like he would put a table out front in the gas station and sell like little knickknacks. I don't even know what he sold. I didn't go out there. Cause would, the, would people buy them? i tell you why no. he should have done. I tell you what he should done. He should open up a gift wrapping service. Because man, he can wrap some Christmas gifts. Now I've heard that about him. I've heard that about him. But he uh, he had uh, false teeth, but he didn't wear them. And so when he talked to you, it was very much and you just had to you, like you couldn't you just could not even begin to fathom what he was saying to you. One day he came in, and I was working behind the counter, and he went, and I went, yeah, 
<laughs> you know, like you do when you don't understand somebody. He started lifting his shirt up. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? And he was showing me his scar from a surgery that he had had, but it went like across this massive belly. Uh, <laughs> That's what he asked if I wanted to see the scar. But <laughs> I couldn't understand him, so I just said, yeah, and he lifted his shirt up. It was ridiculous. Oh, man. And then uh, Casey's favorite. I'll let Casey tell his favorite gas station story. Oh, yeah, man. So there's so many. you got so many stories from this this employment at this place. <laughs> but this uh, this one guy who we also knew when me, me and Andrew worked in the pharmacy, not far from this place, mm-hmm. um, he, what, he, he came in and, and he paid for Mr. something. Mr. Green. Mr. Mr. Green, there you go. I like that. Yeah. Mr. Green, come in. He, what he lay something down, pay for it. You're like, well, you're you're short five cents. <laughs> you, know, you don't have enough change. And he uh, he's like, oh, hold on, and re- swishes around in his mouth a little bit and spits a nickel out. And yeah, hundred percent. No, 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 no. He didn't hand it to me. So he was trying to get a can of dip, and uh, I guess as a substitute, he had had change in his mouth. <laughs> Hey, gross. <laughs> but he was short five cents and he spat a nickel. He didn't hand it. He spat it on the counter. And it like, you know, when Dude, coins drop and they, they bounce around. It did that. And I was like, what the heck? And so he took his, <laughs> his can of dip and he left. Gross. So I wrapped that up in a napkin and threw it away and put a nickel of my own money in the in the drawer. I was like, there's no way. No way I'm touching that. Oh, man. But, uh, James and Avery would come and hang out a lot when I worked at the store, and um, uh, we've seen some stuff, man. We've seen some wild things. James, what did we see? Uh, what about the kid on the payphone? Okay, so there was there was a kid. He he went to high school with us. Um, I think people called him Joe Dirt when when we were in high school. Um, <laughs> Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. Yeah, that's um, so fitting. <laughs> <laughs> but he would like. He would he would either ride a bicycle down and use the payphone outside, like the old school payphone, like pick it up, rotary dial, and everything. Had to get changed. Uh, Didn't he have to get like a roll of yeah, quarters? He came, yeah, he thing? came in constantly and got changed so yeah. he could talk on this payphone. He was apparently talking to his girlfriend or somebody. I, I don't know who he was talking to on the other end of this phone line, but he would always come down and he would either ride down on a bicycle – or he would walk down there from his house. Sometimes he'd have shoes on. Sometimes he was barefoot. But one night he's out there on the payphone, and Andrew's like manager calls the cops on it, <laughs> and like she's like, "There's just he's just this weird guy's outside. Like I don't know what he's doing." And uh, Andrew like finishes whatever he's doing and goes over to he like looks out and he goes, "He's here all the time." And she's like, "Oh." Oh, I, I just thought he was just a weirdo. I called the cops on him. And about the time the cops are like pulling into the parking lot, she like burst, like burst out the doors, like waving, like she's calling off some like sniper hit on this kid. <laughs> like, and Don't he's just shoot. standing there on the phone, just chit chatting away, like nothing's going on. He had no idea, but <laughs> he had she had no idea. She freaked out about that. That was so funny. She did not want them to hurt him. <laughs> Don't and I mean, spills him down. That was Don't move. that was at a time. That was at a time when law enforcement in the in the county didn't really have a whole lot of a, like excitement. So if you called one, you were getting like everybody that was working that night. So <laughs> there's like three cops showing up for this oh, kid on a payphone, and yeah, it was it was just funny because she was a little bit of a bigger lady but she comes like sprinting out the door like waving her arms like no 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 don't take the shot like just yelling <laughs> um Man, she yeah. was she was really sweet you remember when we when we bought guns on our 18th birthday yeah it was her husband that sold us that you remember that yeah i remember that yeah. i still have that little uh 22 i do too um, it's in the I closet absolutely, i love that thing yeah um, to Stevens, I think is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, you, <laughs> you guys got banned from the store <laughs> <laughs> for like a two week ban. Um, and if I Most remember awesome. right, 
part of it was you hit a berry in the back of the head with a stack of I wanna papers. No, no, no. There was, that wasn't that one. There was there, that there was, was uh, uh, there was a lot of stuff we did to to end up getting banned because <laughs> you remember the little like styrofoam planes? Like yeah, they were like I World do. War II planes. <laughs> And uh, and it's all styrofoam, and like you stuck them together, and they had a little plastic cap that went on the end of them to kind of make them nose heavy, and like you could throw them, and they never like they only went like a foot and then fell, and usually <laughs> broke after the uh, after like the first throw. But I don't know what it was. This one that I'd bought, like I was able to like clear the entire store with it. It was like the <laughs> best one they ever made. Um, and she, I guess, was just having a bad night or something, and she was getting upset with me throwing this, like, paper plane all around the store. Um, and then um, I hit Avery in the back of the head with a uh, with a stack of Iwanas. And I'm not saying it's, like, you know, a stack of Iwanas. It was, oh, like, no. the original stack, like, banded together. The, like, way, they, the way they're delivered. 40 something I want us like still banded together. And I hit Abray in the back of the head and he stumbled into the cash register and I think set the uh, panic alarm off. Um, and we got, we got banned for two weeks. But the ban was lifted prematurely, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. They, they paid an old couple to clean the store and restock. I never had to do any of that. I just ran the cash register and cleaned the chili pot at the end of the night. Um, but those, they had surgery or something for some reason they couldn't. So she lifted the ban on the club yeah. brothers. So they would come <laughs> clean the store. <laughs> yeah, she, I remember you calling me being like, Hey, do you want to come to the, to, uh, to the store? And I was like, I can't, I'm banned. And he goes, well, uh, if you come and clean the store, you don't have to be banned. And I was like, what do you mean by clean the store? And you were just like, <laughs> you know, sweep. And I was like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got some free hey, problem. Yeah. Hey, Barry, tell about uh, the time my sister, you were in the parking lot. and <laughs> Well, I, so I just remember, it, like, me and James is going to go down, hang out with Andrew, uh, and we pull in, and her, his sister is, is parked next to us, and, like, we, you know, pour in and she's like walking and I don't know why, what went through her head, but she thought we was weirdos. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, who knows what? <laughs> and like, she comes, like, she like walks around and then like stops and goes, wait a moment, hold on. And like looks back at us and like we wave and she's like, uh, and then like she goes in the store and like me and James gets out and was like, that's odd. Why, what's going on? And like we walked in. To uh, see Andrew, and she's she's like, guys, there's some creepy guys out in the. Th-. And we's like, we are the people parked next to you. And she's like, wait, you guys <laughs> are in that car? Yeah, we went, yeah, yeah, we are. And she was like, oh, okay. I mean, it just goes I'll along look. with the creepy theme. I mean, you guys <laughs> creeped out our sister, and yeah, you know, we took turns doing that to each other's sisters. Um, <laughs> But I'll tell you another one on on uh, my sister. Um, <laughs> so, and you guys know the one I'm about to tell. <laughs> oh, so Wilford, Wilford. Wilford was so gross. I cannot emphasize enough how just unrepentantly nasty this guy <laughs> was. And um, one night, now I'll tell you, I I love my sister. And she has no filter at all. <laughs> she will tell you that. <laughs> when she sees something, she's going to say something. When she you know, says something to say, she's going to say it. And I love that about her. But on um, this particular night, Wilford went into the bathroom. And when he came out, he had peed all over himself. Like you could, you could just visibly see it. You could smell it. It was awful. So he was standing... You know, because when you're soaked in urine, you want to stand next to the ice cream cooler. Um, so he was standing next to the ice cream cooler, and my sister came in and didn't see him, and was um, 
I don't know what she was buying gas or some whatever it was. And she goes, "What smells like piss in here?" <laughs> and I was like, "Shut up!" But he never he never reacted at all to it. It was it was really funny. Yep. He's just rah, 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 rah. all right, Wilford. <laughs> Wilford, I'll tell no. you, there was a um, there was a guy, really the guy that started me. The, the only cigarette I've ever tried was a Cherokee Ultralight 100 from this old man that used to come in all the time. We called him old man, but he was, I mean, I know his name, but I'm not going to say his name. But anyway, um, he was like 107 years old. <laughs> all right. So years later, like 10 <clears throat> years later, um, I was given a tour at the college there where I worked and I saw him like leaning up against the, the church wall. You know, they're by the college. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Leaning up against the church wall. And I was, it freaked me out. I was sure he was dead. And there he was. <laughs> I, I called I called my mom and said, is he dead? And she was like, no, I don't think so. But he is so old. I mean, he it, it's really, but he st- I had my first cigarette. And he gave me a Cherokee Ultralight 100. And it was like I, breathing air. <laughs> I think I, I think I, I think I know the guy you are talking about. You probably uh, do because he went to the local thing up there, the church by the college. Um, I find it hard to believe he went to church, but no, <laughs> but you might. He didn't go to church. He went to the senior feeding program. Yeah, well, that, that sounds. Yeah, that's probably right. <clears throat> yeah, I loved he, him. I loved him. He was hilarious, but he was just dirty old man would come in and he'd smoke outside. And when I got the, uh, what's the cheapest cigarette you sell? Oh man. Tell that one, (laughs) but but be mindful, be mindful of how you tell that. one. (laughs) Oh, so, so we're, we're there hanging out one night and there had been like some pretty like bad forest fires or it was like, burning of the like undergrowth or something between um east tennessee and western carolina and um they had brought in you know firefighter crews and stuff to help kind of contain the uh the burn well this one individual gets out and comes in um he's uh he's he was an american indian And he asked Andrew, he's like, what's the uh, cheapest cigarettes that you have? I guess expecting, you know, I don't know. And Andrew goes, well, uh, I got Cherokees. And he starts laughing about it and then proceeds to go out to the truck and bring in a couple of more um, American Indians and says, (laughs) say it again. And Andrew yeah. goes, it's it's Cherokees. And they all laugh hysterically and then leave. They didn't buy any cigarettes or nothing. They just left. It was just like, oh, we're going to see what's the cheapest cigarettes here. Like, so incredibly my weird. Either they were Cherokee and were so offended that they left, <laughs> or they were like the exact opposite tribe of Cherokee and thought it was hilarious that that was the, the one cheapest know. cigarette. I uh, got a clue. But oh, yeah, man. they were just, it was just like, say it again. Tell him again. Like he thought it was the funniest thing ever. Oh yeah, he he thought it was hilarious. Um, you I remember? Have, go ahead. I have I have two stories that are my favorite that I want to tell, but you go ahead. Is uh, one of them when the power went out? Yes. Okay, that's what I wanted to. I wanted to make sure the power outage <laughs> story got told. That'll get told. Um, the other one is. Gosh, you know, I don't even know. I'm sure you guys have heard this before. I, I'm sure you have. I don't know, though. Um, so this guy pulled in one time, and uh, and I have another one that's not one of my favorites, but i got to tell. This guy pulled in one time, and he was like, hey, man, I'm out of gas. Uh, you know, I just live down the road. Um, I'll go get my wallet. If you'll let me get a couple of gallons, I'll go get my wallet. I'll come back, and uh, I'll fill up, and I'll pay you for the." And I said, okay. I said, well. We'll do that. I said, that's fine, but I'm going to get your tag number before you go. And he said, uh, you know, okay, that's fine. Like, he was very agreeable. And um, he, I got his tag number. He pumped him a couple of gallons, and he drove off. And I never saw him again. So uh, I called the owner, who is was a man that I really respected a lot, just a wonderful guy. 
Um, they were, they were so good to me, you know, and, uh, um, he's, he's passed away now too, but he was just, he's just an amazing man. And, um, anyway, so he said, uh, I said, let's see, what can I call him? I'll call him Philip. I said, Philip, um, this guy drove off, you know, and I explained to him what happened and he said, well, do you, I mean, this guy, this guy was an old man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he said, well, <laughs> Do you want to go swear a warrant out on him? I said well, that's up to you. I said I, you know whatever you want to do, I'm I'm fine. So he he came and met me up in Mars Hill and or you know up in town, <laughs> and uh, we swore. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh Lord! <laughs> so you know, he came and met me up in town there, and we swore a warrant out on this guy with a magistrate. Well, gosh, it would have it would have had to have been three, four, five years later. I w- we were working in the pharmacy, and Philip comes in and he goes, uh, "Do you remember that when you and I swore a warrant out on somebody?" And I said, "Yeah." And I told, reminded him the story of what the guy had done, drove off with gas, and he said. Well, he's trying to buy a gun, and he can't <laughs> because of that warrant. He oh. couldn't buy a gun. <laughs> and so he said, what do you think we ought to do? I said, well, drop it if you want to. I mean, he had sold the story years ago. Said, drop it if you want to. Like, I don't care. I don't. But he, it was so funny. He had come in to, uh, to tell me that this guy was trying to buy a gun. <laughs> so um, two more short ones and then the power outage. Uh one time, so on Sunday, the local country radio station plays what they call country classics, right? And it's older, more traditional country. So I was in the in the store one Sunday, and just just you know, I, it was very chill day, not very busy. And this guy came in and um, got gas, and he might have you know messed around with got got some stuff or whatever. And he came up to the counter and he said, uh, "The song that was playing was." Um, um, let's see, Summertime Blues, Alan Jackson. Excuse me, Alan Jackson. Is that right? Summertime Blues. Yeah, is that the song? Okay, yeah. I'm a gonna raise a fuss. I'm a gonna raise a holler. Right? Yeah, that's Summertime Blues. All right, so Summertime Blues is playing, and the guy goes, "I don't know how you can listen to country music." Now I love country music, and this guy was like in my face. I don't know how you can listen to that, and I said. Well, I said, one of the things that I really like about it is that typically the singers are also songwriters and they write their own songs. Well, Alan Jackson did not write Summertime Blues. And he got so pissed (laughs) because he thought I was saying that Alan Jackson wrote Summertime. He was like, he did not write this. This is not his. He did not write this. This has been around since the 60s. And I was literally like... All right, not a big deal. Like I could not care any less about this <laughs> one song that's on the radio. Like I was personally responsible for the music that plays on the radio. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you uh, did set the radio station, but well, that's true. I did. Gosh, so many good good memories in that. And then uh, this lady. So when Hurricane Katrina hit, um, gas you know shot up. It was very expensive. And so we had a $20 limit on the pumps, but our pumps were so old, you couldn't set a $20 limit. You just had signs up and people, it was the honor system or whatever. People had to, um, you know, abide by that. So this lady came in and told me that she went 40 cents over the limit or something. And I told her, I said, that's fine. I said, go back there and get one of those uh, gas cans that we have for sale. And just siphon it out. There's a siphon hose back there. Just siphon <laughs> siphon the 40 cents of gas out of your tank. <gasps> she got really mad. <laughs> I said, I am I am just kidding. I said, I'm I'm joking. Obviously, I don't mean that. That's a joke. Oh, Man. No. oh I've no. not thought about this store in a long time. I uh I remember having the pump gas for like three or four people one day like they like like yeah. there was an elder there was an elderly lady and she needed assistance yeah i gas. remember that yeah so i went out there and i pumped gas for her and as soon as i like 
hung the uh, thing up, another elderly lady pulled up. So I was like, <laughs> all right, fine. I'll, I'll help pump your gas. So I pumped the gas for that elderly lady. And then another one pulls up and I pump <laughs> gas for her. And then this other lady, much younger lady than the than the three that had previously come through, like pulls up and like makes some kind of like snide comment to me. And I was like, I was helping elderly ladies pump gas. I'm not a gas attendant here. <laughs> like <laughs> and she got upset at me because I didn't pump her gas. Oh my goodness. Like you're gonna be there all day pumping people's gas. I know. Trying to be a good Samaritan and do one thing nice, and like I put in a twelve-hour shift. Just I just started <laughs> pumping one person's gas, and people well, can't they're not they're not paying me for this. So <laughs> like I'm just doing this to I'm be just bad. doing it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, me and James did a bunch at that store, and we never got paid. <laughs> Y'all really did. Like, like I remember, like, like, like I we remember, were able to freeload. Like. They had a big yeah. sign that said "No freeloading, no soliciting," and that's all we did. No, that's <laughs> you true. a lot. <laughs> yeah, there were there were times where I would be like standing behind the counter, not behind the register part, but behind the counter, and Andrew would like go to the bathroom or something, and somebody would come in and be like, "I need to pay for this." Uh, the guys in the bathroom, you work here? No, I don't. <laughs> You're here all the time. Doesn't mean I work here. <laughs> Just because I hang out here all the time, don't mean I like, work here. Like I remember, like, like one day, like I should, like me and James shows up, and like James starts doing something, and Andrew's like, "Okay, Avery, restock the Rolly uh, hot dog thing." I was like, "People buy this stuff." <laughs> <laughs> Why are they doing oh, man, those hot dogs? <laughs> like, like I open that up and like. There's like four hot dogs in there. I'm like, Andrew, there's four in here. He's like, just put one more. Let's do five. Nobody will buy them. They're just going to stay in there. And like some of them was like Dude, old. Did and they buy them No. Oh, no. They weren't, they weren't uh, a big seller. <laughs> but I, every day, every morning, you had to put like nine hot dogs on the thing and make chili. And it was so gross. And – I hate chili. <laughs> so, it was, and every night you had to clean that mess out, and it was so gross. And one Saturday, I was really, really busy, and Wilford was in there, and the owner's wife um, was in there too. And uh, Wil- Wilford saw that I was busy, and the hot dogs had we had actually run out. Like for some reason, people were buying hot dogs at the Dadgum gas station, and that we had run out. So. I look over and here comes Wilford, dirty hands and all. I mean, so <laughs> unbelievably gross, with hot in his bare hands with hot do- frozen hot dogs, and he put them in there and he went blah, 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 and pointed and I was like, "Thanks, Wilford," and he left. And the owner's wife was like, "We're throwing those away <laughs> right now." <laughs> Hot dog station closed. <laughs> closed. Uh, <laughs> Shut down. Closed for oh, sanitation here. We got to. Oh. Man, it's like, wild. It was, here's, how, know, go ahead, here's, a, here's how much time I spent hanging out there. Like, I bought books off the little, like, quarter <laughs> little, like, book rack and would sit there and read them. Like the entire shift Andrew was working, just hanging out. Like I read the Godfather book, <laughs> hanging out with Andrew, sitting in the gas station. I was when I working at the uh, pharmacy, maybe there, and then I would I would maybe get off work and come down there after work or something. Were you working at the pharmacy at that I time? Think, I'm I not sure so. you were. I don't, I don't know think, if you were working there or if you were working at the grocery store. But sometimes on lunch break, you would come and hang out. Seems like you I would have been at Ingles because that, that was that, just after high school. Yeah, that I mean, gas station. Just, that was only like 19 when I started at uh, the drugstore. <laughs> that yeah, gas but we would have been 18 when we uh, when we graduated, and I had a I was there a year. Okay, yeah, because I didn't start there for like a year after high school. Or something, probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that something that like was kind of like here. hanging out at the gas station. Kind of started the origin of of pie no, nights. No. The hanging so. out at the gas station started the origin of Pie Night because yeah. we started, because we went to, we was going to go to our local Waffle House 
Mm-hmm. And we we, and they only have, <laughs> we only have one. They only have one piece of pie. Yep. And I don't know how we did it, but we walked out <laughs> of the place with the pie and a plate. Yeah, Drove with the dish. To- and they they wrapped it for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, worked, it worked out because we knew both of the waitresses and the cook. And they were like, you can take it with you. Like, okay. <laughs> and then we drove to uh, the other Waffle House and was able to do pie night there. And like they, they Andrew's like, like we walked in <laughs> with one piece of pie and we was like, "Do you have three more pieces of pie?" And the woman goes, <laughs> "Yes," and he goes, "Great." We well, take I, that. I, I do believe her statement was, "So you're the guys they called about <laughs> because they had called ahead and said, "Hey, there's four guys coming with one of our plates and a piece of pie." There's some um, weathers coming with some pie. <laughs> yeah, really. There's some odd ducks coming out here and. We, I don't think we ever went back to our hometown Waffle House no. as a group. I, no, because I think shortly after that um, was when the one cook and waitress got busted for being drunk as skunks and uh, doing um, the the no pants tango in the back room. I'm Whoops. pretty sure they were also selling Xanax out of the Waffle House. <laughs> Probably. No, I, I, mean, I think, right. I think the, they were selling Xanax legally. I, I think, the other, I think the they other so waitress good. was uh, selling tricks in the bathroom with Patreon. Oh, yikes. Too. Yeah. But, um, uh, but yeah, so, so Andrew and Casey would sell them their Xanax, and then they would go to the Waffle House, and you could get, you know, T-bone steak and eggs with, uh, with a little <laughs> pick-me-up on the side. You just got the room score. I want the Grand Slam with Extra Slam. Oh, they got it. <laughs> That's where they got it. So I'll tell about the I'll tell about the power outage real quick. Um, <laughs> gosh. So on Saturdays, James Nayberry's cousin, um, he he's a surveyor, and he was he had employed a buddy of mine who was also I think a cousin. Yeah, is that right? Okay, also a cousin. So on Saturday mornings, like early, I opened at like six. And they would be done by eight or whatever with work. So um, he would come. He would come to the to the gas station after work. And one Saturday he was there, and it was it was like eight thirty, like early in the morning, and the power went out. The pumps went out. Everything went out. And so um, he and I sat there on the stoop, telling people we can't pump gas. We can't ring you out. We can't do you know. Can't do it. Can't do it. Just all day long. It was my whole shift. The power was out, but it was great. <laughs> and um, another one of our buddies drove down with his parents looking for gas with the power out. And so they dropped him off and he sat with us while we were sitting there just telling people, I can't sell you anything. I can't, you know, I can't do anything. And this guy came walking up uh, the hill and um, oh, what was his name? I want to say Jeff, and we called him Homeless Jeff, (laughs) but (laughs) he came up and he started talking to us about like how he'd lost his house and he, he, there was an apartment just outside of town that he was going to go and rent while he worked odd jobs and that kind of thing. And we were like, man, that sucks. You you know, he's like, do you mind if I've been walking all day? Do you mind if I sit with you? And so of course we let him sit with us and we were laughing and joking and, and, you know, we're having a good time. And he goes, man. I thought being homeless was going to suck, but this is amazing. <laughs> you know, so you're like, oh, man, tomorrow's going to be so bad. Um, <laughs> so he asks me if he can have the hot dogs um, out of the thing, but they hadn't cooked before the power went out. So I told him, man, I cannot give you those. You will die. <laughs> if I give you those <laughs> so he's like, oh, okay. So then he starts, he pulls out like this thing, not a Ouija board, but something like that and a crystal on a string and starts doing what he called pendulum magic. Oh, man. <laughs> so <laughs> I will locate you. Yeah. So we got done with homeless Jeff pretty quick. We were, uh, we were no longer interested in his company. <laughs> so After just, this, he, I'll give you a terror reading. Man. I mean, basically. So <laughs> he, he, he left. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, I couldn't believe he said that. So he left and then my relief came. And when she got there, the power came back on. I didn't have to do anything all day. <laughs> but when she got there, the power came back on. And, and uh, the uh, 
ice cream. They were worried the ice cream would melt. And so um, the owner's wife like loaded my car down with ice cream. We drove it to um, their house to put it in their personal freezer. And then the my relief called and said the power came back on. So I had to drive it all the way back to the store after that. But the power outage, man, that was crazy. <laughs> One okay. time I had a girl come in on the phone, on her cell phone, and she was complaining about her bridesmaid's dress. And she goes, um, like, she wasn't talking to me, obviously. She goes and gets a candy bar or something, brings it up to ring out. And she was like, yeah, it's vagina pink. I hate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, man. That gas station. That is a oddly specific <laughs> body part and color to be That's like. A color. A specific yep. color tone there. Oh, how, how, mm-hmm. what, how do you come up with that color? You walk in and go, I won't match this. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Lowe's and you get a few swaths. <laughs> then you go to the dress store. You go to the what, dress store. What is the best color for a certain body part that most people don't get to see? I really want everyone to know what color my vagina is. So if we can just match... <laughs> My dress um, to that would uh, be great. Now just we can just color one. match this. <laughs> Click. Oh, oh, shit, buddy. Click. Uh, oh. Do you guys the, the remember the, the old guy gas that station. drove the creepy van that would just like park it in front of the gas station and like like jack it up and like take off the wheels and like switch them around just randomly? No. Because he was a tall guy with like glasses and – he would always sit and like smoke on the picnic table, and his van just be like jacked up on a jack. He's like, "This thing's um, giving me always trouble." Yes, I do remember him. He <laughs> he detailed my car once <laughs> while you were working. Yeah, he he was like, "Man, I've I've got this car detailing business. It would really help me out if you would let me detail your car." I was like, what do you charge? And he's like, I mean, I'll do it for $30. He did a pretty good job. I mean, you know. I just Heck always yeah. remember, like, we would pull in, and he'd be sitting there on the table, like, looking at his uh, van. And he's like, <sighs> and, like, it'd be jacked up, and the hood be open. He's like, <sighs> and I'm like, and, like, we walk by, and we are like, dude, what are you doing? Is your car right? He's like, I'm just changing the oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would. he would. Spot. What? Yeah. Man, I have. I, hey, Barry, I'm so glad you mentioned that guy. I haven't thought about him in 20 years. <laughs> like, like, I was like, wait, don't you have like somewhere else to go change it? No, man, I choose the gas station, and I'm well, gonna sit out here and smoke my cigarettes. You know the the thing about that was a lot of those those regular customers that like that guy and um um. Uh, you know, a few others that would come in regularly used to work there and uh, just love the owners. And so they would continue to come there and hang out. Like it was, it was really funny, but the man, the owners gave me tickets to see George Jones. Um, They gave me tickets to go watch wrestling at the civic center a couple of times. Um, Didn't, didn't you wear headphones to the George Jones concert? To drown out his opening act? <laughs> no, I did not wear it, <laughs> but I wasn't pleased with his opening act. It was Jason Aldean, and I, you know, that's not my thing. So, uh, but George Jones came to uh, our local, the big city, kind of close, and uh, if you will, and um, the local radio station was going around handing out posters. I still have one of the posters. I I kept one, but um, anyway, they were handing them out, and I asked the guy can I have one of those for myself? And he said, yeah. Do you want me to sign it? And I said, no. I had no idea who he was, but he was on the radio. He was one of the radio guys, and he thought I wanted that poster (laughs) for his autograph. I'm like, dude, I don't know you. I don't want you to sign it. (laughs) It's just like somebody randomly coming up to you while you're handing out like flyers or something and being like, can I have one of those? You want me to sign it? You want me to sign it for you, buddy? Please don't. Please don't. You'll ruin it. <laughs> it's, it's, like those, it's like those people up in New York that's like on the street handing out their demo tapes. Hey it's exactly here's, like that. Here's my demo tape. You want me to sign it? <laughs> I don't want your demo tape. Please don't give it to me. 
Um, yeah, I do not want it. I remember one of them coming up to me up in New York and was like, hey, here's two free tickets. And I was like, cool, thanks. And I just kept walking. And he chased <laughs> me for like a block yelling at me to give him his tickets back. And I was like, dude, you said they were free. <laughs> I, I remember that. I, I think I remember that. Okay, so talking about going watching wrestling in our local big, <laughs> big city, uh, do you remember we, me, you, and James, uh, for some reason, our parents was not – our like they went down to do something with our sister – at college, and so we so we all kind of spent the night together. I don't know where Casey was in all this, but we built characters. Watching Hee Haw. We built Being responsible, I guess. I don't know. We built characters in the wrestling game, and like some somehow we came up with that they was having wrestling at a local venue, and uh, we was like, let's go. Let's go see if we can get tickets and go watch this. And, and we did oh. – we and walked we, right in. It was yeah. empty. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and like I we we created ridiculous fantasy moves on on this game, and like mine was like the swinging rock bottom, and like we you you pick them up in a power slam and you like swing them around like no like it's a move that nobody should be able to do because you gotta have the control of like picking them up and then swinging them and then dropping them. Uh, and so, like, we was talking about what kind of moves you think we're going to see. I'm like, we're going to see the swinging rock bottom. <laughs> the first match is a tag team match, and the guy goes, ah, <laughs> We was like, well, what? You hollered for it. You called for it. Yeah. You were like, hit a swinging rock bottom. <laughs> and the guy did. <laughs> we were like second row because there was, there there was, was like nobody, nobody there. there. It was not WWE or anything. It was just a indie <laughs> show and. There was like this guy that looked a lot like comic book guy from The Simpsons sitting next to us with his like ninety something year old mom or something use like the that. Yeah. He yeah, he yeah. hollered, use the ref, and then they did. They picked the ref up and <laughs> Like it was um, just, it was weird. Like we were calling the matches for people, like telling them moves to do and whatnot. I think Disco Buff Inferno Bagwell was, was there, there. And Disco Inferno, yeah. Was Vader there or am I remembering that weird? No, it wasn't Vader. It was um, the Barbarian was there. The Barbarian. Ricky Morton was there. Yeah. Uh, they they was go- they was uh, showing David Fair, Fair, uh, Fair was supposed to be there, and uh, and like a couple other big ones. And it's like they ain't here, but we got these guys. I think the <laughs> Tonka- Disco Inferno. <clears throat> I think yeah. Tatanka was there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was what's that, was the, that was the second time we saw uh, we saw him wrestle before. I was uh, he wrestled uh, at our local high school with like yeah. for some little indie show, and uh, the hurricane was there and groped Abrey. There's a picture of Sugar Shane Helms. I don't know what that picture uh, is. He signed getting that. him getting him a handful of Abrey yep. Polaroid. <laughs> just getting yeah. him, just getting a big old handful. Um, that's probably what's the money nowadays. You know what? You know what's crazy about my time at the gas station? It was just one year, and we've got all these stories. <laughs> like, you were there for one year. I was there for one year, almost exactly one year, mm-hmm. and uh, the owner sold it, and I didn't like who was buying it, and I didn't want to. I'd met him. I didn't care for him, so I didn't want to continue. And, um, so I had them fire me <laughs> at the end of my last shift. I had them fire me and I, I had gone out to read the tanks. You had to look at the, or the pumps rather. You had to read the pumps every day. So I did that at the end of my shift and she said, you're fired. And you know, we, of course I love her today. up and we hugged and whatever. So I went out and it was my last day. So I jumped up to click my heels and I sprained my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> What, what I don't know is is that you had to ask her to fire you because I'm pretty sure <laughs> through that whole year there was probably a bazillion firing offenses. <laughs> not by do. me, just by you guys. <laughs> by association. Um, by the by the people who were not employees. Yeah. Um, I was a good employee there. Yeah. Except one time uh one time I got this weird feeling about like 
I was at home and I was like, am I supposed to work? <laughs> so I drove to the store and the guy, I won't, I definitely won't say his name or what we called him. Um, but anyway, he was standing out in the front smoking <laughs> and, uh, uh, he was like, I pulled up and, uh, put my window down and said, who's working this evening? And he went, you are get in here. Like, I guess I was 30 minutes or so late, but it was just this weird feeling. I got, I should probably go to work. <laughs> oh no, man! I, I just gotta say that guy was the, like, he was the enigma of the thing. Because like, you would never know that he worked there, but like, he would just be there and, and just be outside yeah. smoking his cigarettes. <laughs> like, he was what like, you doing when you work, What's when you work at a smoking? gas station. He was like Unibrow at the Waffle House. <laughs> and he was like that. stories from this place for one year. That's, that's pretty impressive. Man, it's wild to work in the <laughs> in a gas station in your hometown. I mean, <laughs> it was your first job. But it was uh, great. It was you know, a year later or whatever, whenever that was. Oh, man. I worked. I went from there to the pizza place and then to, uh, then to selling drugs. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, I went, went from there to the place. pizza place and then the doctor's office and then – Got into selling drugs there. Yeah, but, the the pizza ah. place went under quick. Are you making fun of the that I smoke, eh, Barry? Like, no. Uh, can can you just add in hoo ha after something like hoo ha? <laughs> hoo ha! I smoked a lot <laughs> in that pizza place. I'll tell you that a whole lot. <laughs> that pizza place, like I miss <laughs> that. Like, I I I miss it for like the nostalgia thing because like. I had butt We used to there. live right behind it. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. And, and we would, like, it was snow, and we were, like, we would call the pizza place and be like, hey, can you guys deliver pizzas? And they're like, no, nah, man, it's snow. And we were like, dude, we are literally behind you guys. <laughs> we're right behind <laughs> you. And, they, the and, they, and they, go, they go, yeah, yeah, we can deliver yours. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> we are like, great. It's even 10 minutes. <laughs> We also would walk okay. to the uh, home vi- uh, our home video store uh, to rent movies and stuff. Yep, real Which, close there. Yeah. Speaking of that, your your sister worked there for a time, didn't she, Andrew? She did. Um, that might have been her first job. It was either that or Ingalls. Because like I don't we, remember, but because I'm pretty sure like me and James just went to del- like we went to return movie. And like ended up, she had a movie playing, and mm-hmm. like we just we stood there and like ate popcorn and watched this movie. <laughs> and watched <some. laughs> and oh, she's man. like, "Do you guys need to go somewhere?" Nah, no, nah, we're good. We're gonna. Nah, we're, we're good. good. It's fine. We're good. I, I think. I need to I see think how the, this ends. Well, I think the movie was like uh, Nanny McPhee, and we was like, "We don't care anything <laughs> about were- this, but God, we like this popcorn." This is good popcorn. Are you gonna put some more on? Man, I miss that video store. Yeah, yeah, they're not really a thing anymore, huh? No, no. And that one hadn't been a thing even longer than most. <laughs> I think, but uh, it's, I remember, it's crazy how much your hometown changes. I remember oh, yeah, my man. first my first job <laughs> was was working at Ingalls. And I mean, me too, man. I, yeah, I remember that. Like I worked like the summer, and then um, football season started up. And I was like, "Hey, I hate, I hate this, but I'm going to quit because I'm going back to school for football, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's going to eat up way too much of my my time. I can't, I, I won't be able to juggle work and football." And uh, I remember putting in my notice, and like, notice comes and goes, and then. Um, the manager one day calls me and is like, are you not coming to work? And I was like, I quit like three weeks ago. And he was like, well, if you don't show up today, you're fired. And I said, okay. No, I remember that because, because they, also, they also called the house. It was like, hey, you, you need to come in or you're going to get fired. And then like the day came and like we came home and we like hit the thing and it's like, you need to come in or you're going to get fired. And then it was like, you, you're fired. You didn't show up. <laughs> yeah. And I was awesome. like. Yeah. I worked there for two. That was, that was the world's oldest angles or something, too. It was. I just remember the one manager that had the glass eye 
and his actual <laughs> eye would just sometimes just like go around in circles. Oh, or yeah. one eye would be looking like extremely this way, the other eye would be like extremely that way. And it was like I can't I can't look you in the face. Like <laughs> okay. and uh they had the they had the little like the floor sweeper machine that would like mop the floor. I remember oh, yeah. I remember having oh, to stand man. back here in the back and like fill it up with a garden hose oh, and yeah. like pour soap from the store, like go in to here. the to the detergent aisle and get soap and go and pour it in there. Oh, they, and yeah. I remember there was one employee there. Um, he was like three or four years older than us. Uh, he would sleep in the milk cooler. Oh yeah. He- and he'd get some dirty magazines. Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd have dirty magazines just, like, <laughs> laying around. Like, not hidden or anything, just laying around yeah. in the back. Oh, yeah. Just, like... That uh, buffer machine, too, smelled, te- like, leaked care or whatever, propane, whatever. Propane, yeah. It oh, was man. like, I really hope nobody strikes a match or... Yeah, we're going to blow this place up. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It just, Yeah, it just smelled of propane constantly. Oh, do, yeah. do you remember when they when they voted on our county to uh, become a non-dry county no more? Like, we voted to become a able to sell alcohol. And so yeah. Ingalls was so happy. What? <laughs> I mean, call me. We call me. We've they're, they're said Ingalls a couple of times. They bring it's all right. How, how they're regional. regional. They are. Yeah, they? good. They're regional. Um, they're some over here. Uh, Tennessee. <laughs> but so um, they were so happy about it. But our, our Ingalls was so old that they didn't have a place for it. So. Uh, the pharmacy next door moved. Like they built their own place and they moved. And I was like, "We are gonna use that, and that's gonna be our beer cooler." Before our new Ingalls got built, and they was like, "So like you could walk in and like had to like walk down and like go through a cutout in the wall, <laughs> like the shadiest place, <laughs> and be like, and you walk into the beer cooler because that's how they did. They was like, "We just gonna jackhammer this wall out and and <laughs> put up some beat it like they put up." The uh, meat uh, cooler uh, rubber things, the the curtain thing that you had to walk through. So, like, you literally went through this shady hole in the wall for uh, for alcohol. And, like, the local, <laughs> the local college was, like, real happy about it because they didn't have to drive so far to get their alcohol and... Oh man! I remember when I worked there before. Then people would come in and be like, they walk around the whole store and be like, "Where's your beer at?" I'm like, well, we're we're a dry county. We don't have any. And they're like, "What? What's that? <laughs> you don't have beer? <laughs> you guys are crazy. What do you guys do? Where do you go? I'm like, you gotta go to the big city that way." Yep. I had a guy come into the store one time and ask for beer, and the owner's wife was there, and she said, "We don't sell it." He said, "Why?" She said, "It's a dry county." He said, why do you do that? And she said, because that's how we want it. <laughs> <laughs> he did not come back. Oh, she's just getting sassy, eh? Oh, getting sassy, right? Man, well, it's changed a lot, you know, since that was, you know, my memories of the town pretty much. And they built that, the new store, and uh, it's, you know, a lot of new stuff there now, I guess. That was you're, about 20 years ago. Yeah. You're uh, crazy. The, the pizza place is... A Mexican place or something now, isn't it? Like it's a yeah. different. Yeah, it uh, it was a Chinese place, but now I think it's a, a Mexican restaurant. Oh yeah, um, it is. It's not too bad. There's um, yeah, it's just it's it's weird to to look back on uh, on the way it was when we grew up there. I mean, we act like it was, you know, fifty years ago, but it what, it really yeah. wasn't. Just changed um, a lot in a short amount just, of time. Yeah, just changed a lot in a short amount of time. And uh, I mean, it's like the photo I sent you guys before we started recording. Like <laughs> me and another buddy found like a mannequin head, like an old dress shop mannequin head, and like piecemealed together of like fake body and like clothing and stuff. And we rode around for probably a couple of weeks, maybe a month with this like dead body looking thing in the back of the car. Like it was just, it was nothing like this is, this is, you know, it's Terry. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> that's, hey, that's what movies. we do. Yeah. Well, the, I the mean, bad thing. just just ridiculous stuff like that. You couldn't do that nowadays. Like, no. well, well, what what made this so much fun of, and and what makes it kind of the bad is like everybody knew you, so that was good because you you knew everybody. It was bad because everybody knew you, so you couldn't really get away with anything. <laughs> um, yeah, and and so like me and James. We, we got unlucky because we had the parents who couldn't go sleep unless their scanner was going. So, like, they would, you know, hear across the scanner that, like, me and James got pulled over or something happened or cops got called to the local soccer field or whatever. And, like, we would get home and they would be like, hey, so uh, what happened? And me and James is like, well, we don't want to tell them the truth. But, the, you know, you, you can't really lie to them because they, they already knew the <laughs> They <truth>. already know. <laughs> yeah. They know. And, they know. And, and so, like, you, you just kind of go, well, I mean, we was we was doing this and they pulled us over and everything was good. Or we was playing soccer and they came because they thought some old woman called the cops and thought we were killing people. <laughs> Who knows? Yep, and like they knew everything. It was like, uh, please, please stop listening to the scandal when we go out of the house. <laughs> nah, we were we were good kids. We were we weren't bad. No, we, we, were we good wasn't kids. bad, but it, it was just funny because like you you couldn't get away with anything. Yeah. Like we wasn't. Casey's nice. papa. Was uh, Casey's papa used to talk all the time about how um, kids are out on drugs and kids are out drinking and that stuff, and we were just. Goofing off in Casey's basement, making I, I wasn't sure where Avery was going to go with that wrestling game story, but we made the most ridiculous characters we could possibly make. Are you talking and, about? Uh, are you talking about Thunder Thighs Tap Out Ten? I <laughs> am. <laughs> and uh, we won't go into a lot of detail about what made him special, but I will say that in the game <laughs> you could create the audio intro for your character, and we I don't know why did we start at T. I don't know either. Uh, it it just seemed to roll. There. It was tons of stuff. Yeah. And so we settled on this guy's name being Thunder Thighs Tap Out Ted. They'd actually say it too, right? Like he would, and they they would say it. it. They would call they it out. They would say from that North Carolina because you could do from a state at that point. But yeah. now you can do cities on there. But from North Carolina, Thunder Thighs Tap Out Ted. We, yeah. <laughs> the best part though was you could edit the actual in ring, like, how they looked in the ring and then what they looked like backstage. So his in ring, he was like as maxed out height wise as you possibly could. I mean, like disproportionate didn't actually fit in the ring. (laughs) And then backstage, we shrunk him down to the smallest size possible. So there's like, there's like an ant flying around hitting people. And then in the (laughs) ring, it's just this big, huge monstrosity. It was, um. <laughs> it was. He was so big that the game had him. He was constantly crouched, like he was so big, his legs were constantly <laughs> bent. Because if they had done the height, he wouldn't have been. And then he was so small that his legs and arms didn't bend, and he was just like this little, you know, doll walking around. <laughs> Ridiculous! Oh man! Oh, it Thunder was fantastic. Tap out, Ted. Well, that I was think- on Raw too for the Xbox. Yeah. And then that time we pretty much spent like three days beating crackdown at uh at casey's house like non-stop just constant that's what we played well oh, that yeah. and cool. uh, left left for dead we, we put a bunch oh, man. of hours we did a lot left of left for dead, dead. Yeah. we yelled at nil before zod nil before, nil before zod. Um, <laughs> but speaking about the wrestling game I, I think we mentioned this but we used to do uh super heavyweights versus cruiserweights yeah. which which I think on our Instagram feed, I sent uh, a clip of like Rey Mysterio uh, giving um, the Big Show, maybe not Big Show, but two of the like Viscera and Andre the Giant, like giving them both like a double F5. I'm like, <laughs> I, well, I wish, in the game that I wish in the game that we did that back. on. Well, in the game that we did that on, you had, yeah, you had the physics and you couldn't do that. That was the challenge. Like yep. if you were playing as Rey Mysterio and you were wrestling the Great Khali, one slam and you're you're all red. Like you're mm-hmm. just, you're done. And we would put it on 
uh, legend mode or whatever their hardest mode is and try to beat them. And Casey would play his kid cash and get really creative with the knees to the face. <laughs> knees to the That's face. all he did. Knees to the face. Well, well my thing was, when you find a good horse, ride it. That's right. Them knees in the face. Well, that was I'm, knees I'm, to the face. I'm trying to think of who who was it. One of them had a like a power slam finisher move, and like somebody always chose him, and would be like they would get the finisher up, and they'd be like, "I'm gonna hit my finisher," and they would run there, and they would go to do the finisher, and they would try to power slam them, and they would like, oh. oh. Yeah, they would grab their back. Yeah, <laughs> like was, they uh, their back. I think that was Crash Holly. Yeah, it was like, well, it's maybe, like maybe so. It's like stop choosing him. He can't finish. Like because the cruiserweight finishing moves would not like you would have to get like three of them and like hit them in rapid succession to hopefully to pin anything. the big guy. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. And and like we had a truce that if we ended up in the ring as the first pair. You, you you separated. You you did not strike at each other. Yeah, you would just taunt to get your finisher bar up, <laughs> and you just you just yep. hope that and wait the, on the giants. You just hope that cage did not open that you was next to. Run yeah. away from the giants. It was roulette. Or, Man, you know, this is. You think you get to a safe spot, and then Mark Henry steps out and just <laughs> power slams you. Materializes and gives you the world's strongest slam. Clo- cloaking device turned off. <laughs> and then you have well, this Viscera. Been, uh, he was yeah. eating hot dogs. He was busy. This, well, is, yeah, uh, but, this but has been would... a true chin wag here. Just, oh, yeah, man. Just throwing out there. like It has. I love the <laughs> – I really I really appreciate – I don't. I think Casey suggested – gas station stories and you know i haven't uh I we haven't really reminisced haven't, about that in a while man, no we, in we a long kidding. time you said it'd be a whole episode just to, talking about that i had a lot of stories <laughs> <laughs> and I, I you know i apologize this was an andrew heavy episode so if you're not a fan <laughs> of mine you might <laughs> no i, I do i do want to bring i do want to bring a uh a text from our group chat where Andrew was complaining. Uh, well, he's not really complaining, but he's saying that he's tired from his uh, 12 to 14 hour days. And he's like, I, don't, I think you guys are going to have to pull, pull uh, more of the show tonight. And then, yeah. uh, and then, <laughs> then <it> went, <laughs> that went out the window and was just straight yeah. Andrew. It's just it a was full Andrew. Andrew heavy. Well, you know, was, we'll, get, we'll have. Uh, other horseman specific episodes. <laughs> we'll let James to tell some of his stories as a stripper. Oh no, we're oh. we're gonna. That's behind the OnlyFans page. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, James, if they want to get on that OnlyFans, how can they do that? I mean, you know, uh, if they want to email us, how can they do that? Uh, they can uh, they can hit us at uh, Chinwag with Horseman at gmail dot com or Chinwag After Dark. Uh, for the only fans, <laughs> it's the only fans. Ugh, if, if you don't, if you don't get a response on that one, just keep going. And one day yeah, you'll, uh, we'll you, you. you've uh, you've not paid That's enough. Right. That's one, right. one, just keep one day. Uh, keep Casey's face will appear and be like, "Welcome to the Love Garden." Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you keep bringing that up. One day we're going to tell the Love Garden story. Yeah, That's could be next time. time. Could be. I think it should be next oh, time. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> hey, Barry, if they want to look at our faces, how can they find us on YouTube? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you did so well with it at the beginning. I know. I thought we found your we found your niche. Yeah, we found the groove there. Just ask Siri to pull up Chimwag with the Horseman on YouTube.com. Mm-hmm. That'll get it. Perfect. There you Casey? go. Casey? We're on the Twitter machine. Where can or they get us X, on the Twitter machine? Or X the machine. X machine. X is the Where call. can they get us on that? At Chinwag Horseman. Beautiful. Tweet well, us. Listen, this is. Do you wait? Hold on. Can I ask a question before we sign off? Do you think yes. he went that he chose the X because he was a big fan of DX? I think that's most likely the explanation. I, yeah. Probably. I think that would be the Definitely. best. Best time, like. He was sure. like, you know, you know, I just like DX, and how else am I supposed to tell people to suck it? 
Yeah. I mean, you, you really can't hardly do that anymore. Casey, I'm not trying to be critical, and I realize this is like the dead end of the show, yeah. but half of your face is like gone. Is there it you is, are? Is I'm leaning. Oh, yeah. on mine, it was fine. My bad. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. He's leaning. Oh, Maybe it'll be good on yours. I know okay. why it is. I'm sorry. Oh. It's because you're on your phone. Yeah. I'm oh, on my because I'm on my phone. Oh, yeah. I'm on my phone, so I'm because not seeing everybody's Andrew's full video. Too, Andrew's too <laughs> good about trying to remember his laptop. I'm exhausted. I cannot Please. remember my laptop. Fans or the wives. Uh, or it's whatever, all right. Why have you called? Please send in an email that says, Andrew, remember the laptop. Yeah, remind me to bring my laptop home. Please <laughs> bring the laptop home. Thanks, Wags. Appreciate that. Um, but anyway, this has been a great episode. I've enjoyed this, and not just because it was all about me, you know. But but I, I really it's enjoyed all about reminiscing. Me. Good reminiscing memories. about these. Uh, yeah, that was it. Was good stuff. Yeah. It was good stuff. I want to talk about me. I want to talk <laughs> well, about I. We're not talking about you. It's too dark. <laughs> we, what a, we can't. What a. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All righty. For oh. Chinwag with the Horseman, I'm Andrew. I'm Mayberry. I'm James. And I'm Casey. There it is. Thanks for listening. <laughs>